Hello there. I'm an architect who's worked in many cities around the world. And I'm here to talk to you about three significant challenges that we face in our cities going forward. The first is our ever-increasing population that we're now facing. The second is using that as an opportunity where we can create innovative housing solutions with our growth. The third is the issues that we're facing with our buildings today and the impact they're having on the environment. So let's start with the first. 50% of us live in cities, and that's increasing. To the next 35 years, that will go to 75%. So that could mean the city that you might be from or the city we're in today could be one and a half times larger than what it is today. And that also means the big takeaway is we need to find homes for 3 billion people in 35 years time. That's 3 billion people. So let's take a city like London. It's 2,000 years old. It's just raised to 8.5 million people. And that's going to increase to 10 million in just 15 years. And I think we need to be asking ourselves, how will we go about doing this? And if you look at the next chart that I'll show, you can wonder, well, it's actually four times larger than any other UK city. And equally, it's 1.5 times more dense. But actually, if we all take our eye further down, you can see a small little coastal town named Brighton. It's made up of four to six story buildings. And it's actually almost as dense as London. So it makes us wonder, is London working hard enough as a city? Can we do better? And when we compare that across other international cities, we're significantly behind the times. We can actually do much better. Most of you probably will know Kensington and Chelsea, probably one of the most aspirational places that we could live here in London. And you probably think it's also one of our lowest densities. But in actual fact, it's one of our highest densities in London. And what you can see, if we could actually work more like Kensington and Chelsea, we would still just be 2.5 times to 3 times less than that of Barcelona or New York. But let's just follow along with Kensington and Chelsea for just a bit longer. If we were actually able to build to Kensington and Chelsea's densities, we could reduce London's footprint by over 40%. And to say that in a slightly different way, we actually could fit 21 million people in our existing footprint in London. However, that's not what we're doing. We're planning to build in the same manner that we've always built. And I can tell you right now, it will be impossible to fit our growing population in London. So what are we going to do? We're going to do the same thing that every other city does. We're going to sprawl. We're going to grow out our infrastructure, and we're going to grow out our roads, and we're going to put more cars on those roads. And the worst thing about this is we're going to lose one of our greatest natural resources, the green parks that actually go around London that we call the Green Belt. That will be gone. So I suggest, in order to preserve our green spaces, we also want to preserve our heritage. We need to look at ways to create new ways of building housing for our growing population. We need to work at the low scale. We also need to work at the mid scale. And we also need to talk about our ever emerging skyline. Today, there are 200 residential towers being proposed in London. But it's very divided about how we feel about tall buildings in London. Our offices are becoming increasingly more popular whereas our housing is becoming an all-time low. There was a statistic that 70% of the people who desire to work in tall buildings, but only 30% would like to live in one. Surprisingly, our homes that are nearly 200 years old are more popular and preferred by Londoners. And it's interesting that our Victorian and Georgian properties have actually been more flexible and adaptable over time, adjusting to different generations and different uses. I challenge everyone here that you should have the ability to express your personal likes and dislikes when buying a new home. We need to be solving our city's problems, not creating more problems. They need to capture the diversity that we're accustomed to, and we should be able to create choice and configure spaces that we desire to live in. We should have the opportunity to have the character of a Victorian terrace or live in a loft warehouse. We have that as a possibility. We equally should be planning to create our communities that we want to be living in. We should think about our schools, our nurseries, even our offices, as well as our gardens and our parks. 
and we could bring these all together and be creating communities that adapt to our increasing population in new and exciting environments that all of us desire to live in. Take the young professional, like a lot of you out there today, happy just to be on that property ladder, but the first time you run into a problem, the first time you have a change in your life, you're going to then just think naturally that you will find a new property. But I'm suggesting that there's other opportunities out there. What we should be creating are homes that adapt for our lifestyles and our needs in our lifestyles. The young professional has the opportunity to actually create more. We can actually increase or decrease depending what our situation might be. And it's conceivable that we could build these units to actually where they could move up, they could move down, or they could even move sideways. And no longer the young professional anymore, hopefully it's all early retirement for all of us, we could actually think about reducing the size of our apartment and actually have another way that our family could be always given more choice. It's where our homes adapt as our lifestyles change. If we took this approach, we could have residents all coming together to create a community. One that has the ability to have choices for all of us, all of its users and all of its residents. The ability to adjust whether you wanted restaurants, if you wanted libraries, or if you even wanted your own apartment custom designed to your needs. But why aren't we doing this? We aren't doing this because we don't have a flexible model set up. We also don't have a way to combat our CO2 emissions that our buildings are placing on the environment. Just last week, in Paris, the COP21 had a discussion, and they identified that since the pre-industrial era, we actually have raised the temperature on the planet by one degree. One degree, that sounded pretty bad, but I didn't know exactly how bad that was. But they went on to say that if we continue to populate and to build in the same manner that we are, by the year 2050, we have done more damage to the planet and it will be irreversible. Irreversible. We need to make significant changes going forward. We need to reduce our CO2 emissions and we need to do it today. I'm gonna to introduce you to two materials that we're probably all familiar with. They built all of our cities for the last 150 years. They've done some amazing things for us, but the things they won't be able to do is to reduce our CO2 emissions. Of the 200 towers that I suggested that was being built for our residences, we have an opportunity today. We could build those of the same steel and concrete, and if we do, we'd actually have one million tons of CO2 going into our atmosphere. Our buildings that we work and live in create almost 50% of the CO2 emissions in the planet today. We need to make significant changes. And we have that opportunity, we have those resources, we know of them. They've been right under our nose or perhaps over our shoulders. It's our forests. We could actually be giving back that same energy that we could throw up into the atmosphere, we actually could reduce and give that back by just using timber construction. And not to worry, I'm not talking about deforesting our planets. I'm talking about just the opposite. I'm suggesting we grow our planet. Today we import 75% of the building materials into the UK. We could actually be growing all of our materials within the UK. If we decided to build these today out of wood, these 200 residential towers that I've mentioned, it would only be 10% of our annual forest within the UK. That's only 10% of our annual yield that would be taken away from. So this is all possible. And probably a lot of you know that we can make wood, we can make great things, we can make stage sets, we can actually also be able to make small residential houses. But what a lot of people don't know is that actually we have the capabilities and the technology to increase wood construction to up to 60 stories. And again, if we decided to take that same mission where we're gonna start working with timber, we could actually reduce 80% of our CO2 emissions by using timber construction. And that would mean for those 200 towers that I've been mentioning, we could reduce 80,000 cars off of the road and could also offset energy consumption of 50,000 traditional UK homes. So I wanna leave you with this today. Your new home should allow you to control your environment that you want to live in. It will also allow you to shape the future of our cities. But most importantly, 
It will control the environment of our future and our future generations. Thank you very much.